Welcome to Mindset, where we journey through the realms of mind and body to unlock the full potential of human wellness. Join your host, Alex Muir, as we explore transformative health hacks, debunk myths, and empower you with knowledge straight from the experts. Dive into each episode ready to flex your mind, body, and soul, because your ultimate well-being journey starts right here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. In today's episode 112, we're going to be welcoming special guest, Sarit Atwood. Sarit Atwood is a biohacker, personal health and fitness coach. She's helped thousands of women transform their mind and body, their brain, and enhance their soul. And through that, that's been through nutrition, through fitness, through mindset, and we all know mindset is one of the most important keys to uh, building uh, a better mind, brain and, like, brain and body. So welcome, Street. Thank you so much for joining us on the Mindset Podcast. This has been a long yeah. time coming to do this interview, so I'm absolutely stoked to have you on. So stoked to be here. And the first thing that I want to talk about, because I, I was looking at your content and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, she's like a tailor fit for my show, um, was talking about how discipline equals freedom, a, a core theme in all of your content, your eBooks, your um, fitness regimen, nutrition regimen, right? Is we got to be disciplined. We got to build discipline into our daily life. Um, and a lot of people, they, they choose not to be disciplined or maybe they're just not being disciplined enough. So how can people become more disciplined or build that discipline muscle and get better at it? Because another post that I saw was, was, you yourself went through a phase where you're like, you're running, right? We, and we all go through it where we're kind of running away from trying to be disciplined because of the pain that we feel when, because when we're trying to build discipline, life is a little bit more messy and we're imperfect trying to build that routine and build a diet. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, I'm stoked to be here. So with regards to, to discipline, I believe that we're all disciplined. Now, the question is, is what are we disciplined to? So when you hear people uh, say, oh, I'm not disciplined or I struggle with my discipline. First of all, what I want you to know is that, no, it's not that you're not disciplined. It's just that you're unintentionally disciplined because we are all a byproduct of habits. Whether we like it or not, that is how our brain wired. You are wired to like to sleep at one side of the bed, to have a morning routine, whether it's two minutes, 20 minutes, or I don't know, two hours, whatever it may be. We're all disciplined. It's just that because from a very young age, we haven't been taught how to be intentional when we become unconscious our discipline reverts to things that are not helpful like you know like we see it everywhere like you know netflix and chill for five hours every single night like my dogs are barking uh, <laughs> you know like like eating junk food like snoozing our alarms so you know no matter what our brains are going to go for the most comfortable path so if you are committed to choosing to become consciously disciplined, then the way to do it, and this is where most people go wrong, they go from zero to 100, right? It's like when they have that aha moment, because maybe they're looking at themselves in the mirror, or they just noticed, you know, because of some kind of event that happened that an area of their life needs to be fixed, they want it to be fixed five days ago, right? Yeah. Because we no longer live in the Amazon Prime era, we live in the Amazon Now era, so we want everything to arrive five minutes from now. But yeah. the reality is, is, you know, I'm just gonna take our weight into perspective. Let's say if you wanna drop 40 pounds, while you may wanna drop those 40 pounds in 40 hours, I totally get it, I've been there, trust me. The reality is, is that just, uh, just like the weight has not climbed up to 40 pounds in 40 hours, it's not going to go away. So what we do that's different is we find the simplest path of least resistance to teach people to focus on one action at a time, one step at a time, 
repetition, it might not seem very sexy over a matter of, you know, like seven hours or seven days, but in seven months and seven years, the results that our people get are astronomical because when you create a habit that is conscious and that helps you, you, you no longer, you know, go into a state of, oh, I fell off the wagon or I was so good until, right? Because whether you're, you know, you're just telling me, you and your wife, you're going to go celebrate your, your anniversary, whether you're on vacation, whether it's the weekend, when you have put in the steps, you find a way to work it out no matter what, because it's a, it's, it becomes a part of who you are. I love that. Yeah. Cause yeah. like for, for myself, like since I was like, cause I'm 31 now. So since I was like, let's say six or seven years old, right. Mm -hmm. I've been wired and groomed for movement. Like my dad, he's like, he's like, you're not going to be a kid. You're not going to be my son that sits around all day and plays video games and, and doesn't do, you know, doesn't move. Right. He's like, he's like, I come up from a background of movement because my dad played hockey. He played box across. Um, he played well, like tons of different sports and he boxed. So he's doing like three sports always at the same time. So he's like, I don't expect you to do that. But he's like, I expect you to move. And he's like, what do you want to, what do you want to try first? You want to do soccer? You want to do lacrosse? Um, and then I'm like, oh, I want to do soccer. Cause like at the time I was already learning like, oh, I like to run. I like to run around. And it was a, it was a tailored fit. So from there. I was always, I just learned, like I was born and bred for movement and anytime I don't get movement, I feel off. So yeah. that started at, so that started at a very young age. Right. So it's like you said, like we're, um, it was baby steps. I, well, I didn't feel forced. I didn't feel forced into exercising. Some people feel like they, they, um, like it's the exercise is just like not for them. Exercise, I believe is for everyone. It's just, it, like you said, it, we got to make it as easy as possible to want to do. And for me, when I was playing sports, it felt effortless because it's like I'm doing something fun and then the time just like flies by. So, yeah, yeah. And on the concept of exercise, too, like it's also about finding a style of an exercise that that works with your personality type. You know what I mean? Like some people are going to hate weightlifting. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to love running. Some people are not going to like it. And over time, as you gain consistency, then it's starting to balance the act of adding more things that you might not, you might not like in the moment for the sake of the greater good. So the whole concept of discipline is um, small inconvenience for a long term payoff, everything that we for everything that we do or don't do, there is a consequence. So for example, it, you know, when we're recording this, it's almost lunchtime. You know, you can choose to have for lunch, like, let's say, chicken thighs, sweet potatoes, broccolini, or you can choose to have pepperoni pizza, right? Like, no matter what, there's going to be a consequence to both lunches, one of which, depending on your goals, will get you closer to your goals, one of which will not. So it's about consciously understanding, pausing before everything that we do or don't do. And it's like, hey, how will this affect me? Like, later on today, tomorrow, one year from now? And does that align with the life that I want to live? But because we're not taught to ask these questions in school, because in school, we're taught what to think, not how to think, people don't actually know themselves, they don't know what they want out of their lives. So they're putting, you know, what's a social no norm as part of, oh, this is what I want. Is it truly what you want? <laughs> you know, but they that never, doesn't work for everyone that doesn't right, work for but everyone they, but they never took the time to think about it especially because we live in a very busy society so it's like if you don't learn to slow down and really think for yourself hmm, like what do I want my life to look like what does a healthy body look like for me you're never gonna know you could be chasing something that's so empty and then speaking of like baby steps, incremental steps towards building discipline, what are, if some people have some psychological blocks, right? They're starting and then, they, or let's say they're doing the start and stop, right? Like where you're talking about in your content, the yo-yo dieting up and down, up and down. I've been through it as well. Like I did the intermittent fasting. I did keto, all those things. Cause I, you know, I, I love to experiment, right? You don't know. I don't like to bash anything until I try it myself first. So, yeah. but the biggest hurdle always is psychological is mindset so what are some kind of exercises or tools that maybe you start people with that are maybe 
they need to kind of relearn how to learn how to build that discipline, right? Before they like, or do you do it in conjunction as they start their exercise regimen that you build for them? Or do you give them the psychological tools and say, hey, like you need to, we need to prime your mindset, get your mind right before we start you on your, your, your fitness journey or nutrition? Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you how we coach people in general because we have our five pillar system. Um, and like big picture answers depends, right? It depends because if I'm working with an injured person or with someone who just got out of surgery, like exercise might not be relevant for them. Now, here's yeah. the deal from a big picture standpoint, right? If we're talking like general society, um, we help people to transform their bodies and life through our five pillar system because we believe that if you're not implementing wow. Wow. consistency and those five pillars eventually you're going to have a break in the chain and you're going to become inconsistent so the five pillars that we go by are movement so what we believe is wow. movement is food and food is medicine we've all been designed to move right and it it if you if let's say your listener is listening to this and maybe they're feeling blocked with moving it's uh, there are different ways that we can tackle it and i'll go into it in just one moment the second pillar is nutrition we are what we eat and food is either the most abused drug or the most underused form of medicine and especially nowadays with all the trickery that's happening in the, the food industry and then the big three big food big soda and big pharma um like you cannot afford to not know how to how to eat right um so of course we built systems for each and every one of those pillars to simplify everything the third one is regeneration and recovery because we can only perform whether or not you're an athlete to the degree that you're recovered because we all have an iphone right yeah and yeah like can you use your iphone or your samsung whatever phone you use um if your battery is not charged no exactly meanwhile for some reason there's big there's this big idea out there that it's like go all out 100 percent every single day and it's like Imagine if you're using your phone like on video all day, every single day, and you're draining your battery and you're not putting it on a charger, are you still going to be able to use it? Is it any wonder people yeah. are sick, stressed out, depressed? No, it's no wonder, right? So that's the third one. It's about regenerating our energy unit, which is our body. Um, the third one is mindset and mental toughness, right? So there's levels to it. It's about learning how to think and also developing a certain level of resilience and fortitude to go through hard times because normally the higher you achieve and the higher you want to achieve the more it's going to require out of you right like like you're gonna be able to need to reiterate yourself and reinvent yourself as far as your relationship with pressure right so we train people how to do that ahead of time so when they get to their next level like they're able to breeze past it instead of suffer their way through it. Um, and then the, and then, you know, the fifth piece, which kind of wraps it all, it's, it's all discipline. So how do we, you know, take a person and we help them to become disciplined? No. So one of the things that one of the methods that we teach is what we call the low hanging fruit approach. So let's say if right now we're working with five pillars and I asked you, um, Actually, we have an assessment and we can totally share it with your people so that they can see for themselves, like where basically like they get a scoring of where they're at for each and every single pillar. But let's say I'm, I'm going to ask you, Alex, how would you rate your um, movement consistency on a scale of one to 10, 10 being over the past year? I've been super consistent. I'm totally on top of it with my workouts. That's 10 or one is I haven't worked out in a year. Where would you put yourself? I'd probably say like an eight because because I, I tend to do hit training. So sometimes I'm absolutely gassed. Like you said, if I went over 100 percent in the last couple of sessions. So it's like two to three days a week of hit. But sometimes it's only two because I'm, yeah. I'm doing more cardio in there as well. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So for the sake of your audience, so like I'll ask, I mean, that assessment will take every person through more intricate questions, but out of those five pillars, which would you say you would score like the lowest on? Well, lately I'd say recovery. So recovery, okay. I just, I just did an hour of yoga yesterday, but you know, that hour of yoga, I, I should have broken up into smaller chunks, right? Like manageable, yeah. like, like, cause I, I like to do but don't, I don't always have, I don't always build in that time, but I like to do at least, let's say five to 10 minutes of, of mobility or stretching post-workout because okay. it is so, so taxing on the, on the joints. So yeah. I'd say I'm a five on, let's say five or six on uh, yeah. regenerative or recovery. Yeah. Okay. So cool. So let's say if, so I'll, we'll start with one, right. And you know, depending on where you're at and what your measurements are for the others, I'm like, okay, Alex, so now you've got like, I'm going to give you five options. Option number one is go to bed 15 minutes earlier or sleep 15 minutes longer. Option number two is do 15 minutes of yoga every single day. Option number three is drink half your body weight in, in ounces of water. I think, I think in Canada, you guys use liters, right? Which is I, so I, I I know a mess of the list. I, I I do the same thing though. I go by the uh, the 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 U.S. Okay. metrics. This is easier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So so, and and there is more, but again, just to keep your audience on track, let's just use these three. Which of these do you feel least resistance towards and most confident in executing? Hit training because I love it so much, and and it gives me a massive energy spike. Wait, so the, the three were either go to bed 15 minutes earlier or sleep 15 minutes later. Option number two for recovery was do 15 minutes of yoga or stretching. Option number Oh, right. Oh, the options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd say 15 minutes daily of yoga. I could I could stick to that because it's a small enough amount of time and it would make it would help me recover faster. Cool. Beautiful. So now we've you picked your intention, right? Based on the the missing gap so what we're going to do next is we're going to focus on consistency so then over a span of seven days you're going to score yourself either in terms of ones or zero as simple as that every day when you hit your 15 minutes of yoga you give your, yourself a score of one every day when you don't you give yourself a score of zero okay seven days later i'm going to ask you all right alex what was your score and then if you're at like seven, okay, amazing. We're going to repeat the same thing for another week just to make sure it's not a fluke, right? Because the more time <laughs> you do, the more, the more margin of error you're allowing yourself because that's just life. Um, and, you know, based on how you do the following week, then we're going to build on top of it. So really all it is, it's about finding out what – like what areas we're dropping the ball in and then how do we lead it with consistency in a way that is not painful and then we add on top of it so it's kind of like you're already training yourself you're giving yourself the instant gratification because you're able to see the score you're not progressing if you're not being consistent because then you're cheating yourself right so you learn to build to build integrity and honesty and you're also getting that, you know, dopamine reward. It's like, ooh, I got a score of a one. It's amazing. So like we have this journal where every single day I have my set of targets. And by the end of the day, I score myself. And we actually developed an app where people get, our clients get customized lifestyle programs literally based on that assessment that I was telling you about and based on their score so that, they can have daily accountability with regards to where they're at. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. 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 We can talk about it later too. Like, no, awesome. no. I, and I like that. That was like a really in-depth like assessment, right. Of like a potential client. That's awesome. And yeah. can you share a little bit about, cause I saw like a before and after with yourself, with your personal journey, can you yeah. share your personal journey with weight loss and body image? And what are some of the pivotal moments that led you to become a coach and start uh, your podcast as well, Espresso with Aaron and Sarit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you were to see me today, 
you you might think that I've had it all figured out. The answer is, is that that's definitely not the case because my dog just, what do you want, baby? You want to come say hi? Come here. She's just sitting in front of the <laughs> Okay, we're good. Come here. Hi, honey. Okay, so so for a longer portion of my life, I actually used to be completely inconsistent. I I started my body transformation journey at the age of 12 because I was an overweight child. I um, I was being made fun of. I used to be bullied and I didn't like it. So I wanted to change my identity and not knowing what I didn't know. I was like, OK, I'll change my outside. Right. Like thinking that that's how it, it was going to work. So. Uh, what I thought was going to be like a diet that I really didn't know how to execute turned into over a decade long of just like yo-yo dieting, like you name it, I've done it all. I was probably like the biggest guinea pig. Um, you know, I was basically like a test tube for over a decade. And um, three weeks after I graduated from college, my my dad had a massive heart attack. Now, my dad is the guy just ethical human being. He, you know, devoted his life to taking care of his family and working. He worked overseas and he stopped taking care of himself because the thing that he said is I'm too busy because of work, right? Just like what most people say. So he went from this like super in shape, like parachute military guy to gaining a little bit of weight to in his 40s and now had high cholesterol, high blood pressure, gaining a little bit more weight. By the time he was 50, he was extremely overweight, like completely out of shape. And um, one day he had a massive heart attack. At the time he was working in Africa and we thought we were gonna lose him. That was, that was and that's when I had my turning point. Um, at the time I lived in the US, I bought a one-way ticket to Israel because they flew him on a medical plane. We're like, we're not sure if he's going to make it. I was devastated. And I thought that the entire family's, you know, like financial situation is going to rely on me. And I'm like, my mom needs me. My brother needs me. I'm the older child. Some of you guys might get it, right? Being the older child. So uh, I remember seeing him getting reeled into the hospital and it's like, the life was taken out of him. And he was just 54 years old at the time. And it was the scariest moment of my life. And this is when I had my 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 real turning point. That everything was a blur. And what I remember is asking myself, is this what you want your life to look like when you're at, at the age of 54? Is this how you want to end it? Because I had a very similar personality like my dad. Diet Coke all day, every day, sugar-free chocolate, all of this. Meanwhile, I'm cheating on myself all day, every day. I have absolutely no discipline. I'm trying to find the easy way out. But um, so I told myself no. And that's when I knew that in order for things to change, I needed to change. It's not about the diet. It's not about the weight loss bill. It's not about waiting for the next best thing. It's about me being responsible and learning how to take care of myself. So that night when I when I went home, I had like a spiritual moment with God. And I'm like, God, show me the way and I will follow. And if you will teach me how to do that, or if I will figure it out, I promise I'm going to commit the rest of my life to helping others as well. Wow. And once my body completely transformed because I asked myself a really important question every single time. I'm like, number one, I asked myself, what, what, do, what, do we, what do you want, right? What do you want? So I got super clear on that and I wanted to have a six pack. I wanted to be super in shape because I felt that I was meant for greatness. So every time I wanted to have ice cream or, you know, I used to drink six Diet Cokes every single day, like without a doubt, I'm like, is this how like, you know, so-and-so athlete, or is this how, you know, like the best version of you going to treat yourself? So I, I, I started like crossing things off and checking the boxes. And I was like, yes, no, yes, no. And I started to, to follow patterns. And I saw what was happening with my body over time. And Progress started to happen, progress started to happen. And the whole point and transformation is about staying in the game. One of the biggest problems is that we're taught to think in terms of destination. Yes, 
have a goal inside, but the point is to to play the game and to stay in the game. Because if you think about all the greats, I see you got Michael Jordan in the back. Michael yeah. Jordan was great, not because he thought about his retirement. Michael Jordan was great because he simply loved the game. So yeah. when you are learning how to fall in love with the journey by not making it extremely painful every single day when you haven't built a pain tolerance, right? And you find a way to reward yourself, right? To reward system with the ones and zero stuff like that. You you learn to fall to fall in love with yourself by by gaining self-respect and by having a measuring stick to work towards every single day. And and you learn how to think for yourself and follow the process. And the more you follow the process, the more you learn about yourself. Like, I am wiser today than I was last year, than I was 12, 12 years ago. Now, the thing is, people think that, you know, like, if they didn't reach their goal weight in eight weeks, something's wrong. I'm like, dude, I've been playing the game for 13 years. So when someone's like, I want abs like yours, or I want arms like yours, I'm like, all right, are you willing to <laughs> work? Because yeah. there's no end game here. It's about no. staying in the game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally hear you. Like, and thanks so much for sharing like your personal journey. Like I, I can really relate to that. A big, a big portion of that too, because my dad had a, he's still with us today, but he had a cardiac arrest um, like heart related, right? Like it was a really hot day. He, he is, his heart rate was already elevated from, he was like doing like, he's got OCD. He was doing a lot of cleaning. Um, and then he goes and goes for a, like a run. Cause he was always a runner and then boom. And then he just, the, the compounded stress from, from work and career, it just, it all hit him at the same time. And then, uh, that was August. Yeah. Long weekend, 2020. And wow. yeah, and then it was a it was a recovery. It was there was a recovery period. He had to really slow down. And he's he's that kind of a guy, right? Like he's like pedal to the metal. He's like, no, if you're not gonna help me, I'm gonna do it all. And he had to really readjust and rethink his entire life on how he does things. And you know, and that 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 shook him. That and that shook all of us to the core, right? I thought because it happened twice. Like I my dad says, like that was my second miracle. His first miracle was when he got in a car accident when I was seven. Thought we were, yeah. my mom, like, and, and my, it was just me, my mom, and my sister. And we thought that we we're going to lose him. He, he was working so much. He, he fell asleep he, and he went under a semi. He just fell asleep behind the wheel and just wow. goes off. And then they, the, the, they had to get that, that, uh, massive truck that has the jaws that like has to pry apart, right? Like a, like car wreck that was my dad and he was on the edge of falling off of a cliff are you Next, kidding me? i'm not kidding i'm not kidding so that was first miracle and then second miracle was 2020 when he had uh his cardiac arrest event so so i so because of the going through that right i didn't really understand the first miracle because i was so young but the second miracle i'm like holy smokes like this could happen to any of us because my dad like never smoked always exercise, right? Like everything that everything they tell you to do, he did. And it still happened to him. So, you know, it just taught me like our, our, uh, each day is not guaranteed. And I really want to focus on managing my stress better because I, I'm a similar to my dad where like we, we can handle it. We can handle stress better when we're constantly moving and exercising and eating well and stuff. So I can handle the, the, the toll of stress, but but our internal narrative, my internal narrative needed to be changed because it was, you know, I was, I went through phases where I was very pessimistic and, and down. And because of, you know, like, like you said, you were, you were bullied and I got bullied in high school and stuff. So all those little traumas, right. We kind of have to rework our inner world. So it's, you know, so we, so we're not like, I, I've always been my biggest critic. So when other people criticize me, it feels like boom, boom, like, it's like hammering me, right? Even if it's constructive, even if it's for to help me grow. So, yeah. um, but I've learned how to like lessen that, right? So it's not so, so it's not like a, cause there's like a phobia that you can have uh, when you're like, you're really hard critic on yourself and, and then other people, you know, give you criticism. So it's like, there's, there's a, there's a name for it, but I don't know what it is, but I learned about it in therapy, but basically, yeah, that's the biggest thing is just, um, like learning how to do that inner work and, but giving yourself grace, you got to give yourself grace during the journey and during the process, because you're going to slip up, you're going to fail. It's all part of it. 
but yeah. but like Michael Jordan, right? He failed a lot too. He missed over six thousand shots in his entire career, yeah. but that spanned over over ten years, right? Ten or eleven years, like you're talking. It wasn't instant, but when he was getting beaten to a pulp by the Detroit Pistons like three years in a row, he's like, okay, he's like, this is ridiculous. He's like, he's like, the, the ball's not going in the net like it normally does, like like against Boston. Like he would still score thirty points and they would lose, but you know, he gave it his all and they were, they were closer and closer to winning and eventually they won, but he couldn't get past the Detroit Pistons. Like they had their big three, like, and they had Dennis Rodman, they had uh, Isaiah Thomas, and then they had uh, Bill Lambeer and they were just beating him to a pulp on the way to the basket. And they called it like the Jordan, the Jordan defense where they would just collapse on him on the way when he's doing his layup or his dunk. And he would, he just couldn't get in there. So he talked to his trainer and he's like, I got to, I got to build myself up. I got to build that resilience. Right. And yeah. like how you're talking about building that resilience, we, we can do that with the body, but we can do that with the mind as well. So yeah. sometimes it's just a little bit of uh, uh, different finessing and how we do things and changing the routine. It can be an absolute game changer and bring us to that next level. Yeah. Yeah. 1000%. But, but yeah, like talking about going back to your personal journey, like talking about how you like evolved from that, like what your dad went through and trying to be strong for your siblings and your mom, like how did you, um, because that's a lot of, that's a lot of emotion going on at the same time. And it can be sometimes difficult to, um, still you right. You've got your vision, you've got your, 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 your clarity on where you want to go and who you want to become. Yeah. But when, when kind of feels like your life's kind of like not maybe not falling apart, but there's a lot of like things going on at the same time. How do you stay the course? Like you're saying, like stay in the game. It's not easy. And th this is what we call test seasons. And I will tell you that one of the things that brings me most peace is my discipline because if you think about it, in life, there's so little control you have. I don't have any control about whether or not it'll be sunny today, 80 degrees, uh, you know, what the air moisture is going to be like. But I do have control over one thing, and that is how I think and, and what I choose. So when whenever i go through a really challenging season or a challenging event in the day right it's like i can choose what i tell myself and what i do in this very given moment like in a workout if you ever do a, a really hard workout that's just like a small microcosm of, of life right it's like okay are you are you gonna quit or are you just gonna focus on this one next rep so this is why building discipline is essential because it actually gives you confidence to go through hard times. And here's the deal about anything that you want to achieve in life. The only way up is through. You can try to take the elevator. You can try to speed your way to an amazing marriage, an incredible career, um, a million dollar business, whatever it may be. But it's all about who you become in the process. So one of the things that we say in our community is that it's not about the weight that you lose, but rather who you become in the process. So we teach people how to become the person day by day, decision after decision, action after action, to align their actions with the person that they want to become because our thoughts lead to our actions which lead to our habits over time and our habits lead to our character our character determines our legacy i love that yeah yeah and um yeah it's like it, it just the yeah the like like when like when you're talking about like oh like sri you're like you know your clients are like holy smokes like you're i want to look exactly like you and and but they want it so quickly and yeah going back to that like it's a it, it it was a journey for me to get to this point and i was like i was never necessarily in shape but i had my moments of like you know i i i, I went i got you know i i was more relaxed and i did gain weight i absolutely yeah. gained like during covid when everyone was a little more 
you know, they're like such a shock. It's like, oh my God, like, whoa, like I was drinking. Like, you know, I still like to drink alcohol. Like I don't, like I don't believe in completely eliminating. I know it's not good for you, but hey, I like a glass of wine now and then and so does my yeah. wife. So it's like, yeah. it's more the social component. I just like, you know, I yeah. like being social and, yeah. um, and so, yeah, so that happened. I almost like, I'm like my, you know how like people's weight, they like to like, there's like an internal, um, homeostasis where we like our weight likes to stay at this certain level based on our height and, and how we feel. And, and I feel my best at like 170 pounds. I'm my leanest, yeah. but I my, my muscle to leanness ratio is like where I want it to be. If I'm any yeah. bigger than that, I feel like it's more taxing. Oh, um, yeah. More, more taxing on, um, like, yeah, like my mind and body, like it's just, it, it, it breaks down too much. So basically, yeah. Um, yeah, like I just, I just like to stay, to stay the course and to, to get back to where I wanted to be, like you said, just had to slowly dial back, you know, those habits, right. Yeah. Where I went easy on myself and then just focus more on the hit training and, and mobility and, but just little bits, little chunks, yeah. and then you make it manageable and then you, they're building blocks to building yourself back up when you, when you've had, when you have failed and you have I've gone off course a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. And then there are seasons where you want to like, you know, add a little bit of pressure. And when you when you have a solidified baseline, you can handle the pressure when the pressure rises. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, like the uh, like the way you teach your clients, like you've helped you, you you've helped them build a foundation and they didn't necessarily have that foundation before. But from from them interacting with you and Aaron, like they start to build that foundation and then that process. And then if they do fail or they do have a mishap, which all of us have, they can bounce back a lot faster Yeah, and come exactly. back even stronger. So that's, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's about, it's about closing the gap of our shortcomings and increasing our level of follow through. Yeah. So it, it, yeah. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that's exactly how life is. It's like like the stock market. It's like this. It's like yeah, like, exactly. Wrap it, wrap it up and down. It's never like everyone thinks it's like oh yeah, nice steep climb to the top. No, it's like rapid, up and down, up and down, up and down. But through the ups and downs, then you see, it's it's right. We want to be you know, it doesn't have to be like this. It, you know, even when it's like 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 goes down like that, we we learn how to kind of be more in the middle because we're just we're so focused on our, our discipline, our consistency and continually showing up. Yeah. Even if we, even if we feel like crap or we're like, Oh my God, I don't want to be here. But as long as our, 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 our long-term vision of like, like our legacy, right. We, we're keeping that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, like, uh, I can't think of anything else to eat, but, um, yeah, I would love to have you on the podcast again. And, yeah. um, love this has been an amazing interview. I know we've only scratched on the surface, but I would love to have you on again, do a part two and dive cool. even deeper into uh, more of a, uh, you know, more of your background and, and uh, again, the psychology and the mindset behind building an amazing body physique yeah. and, and staying the course for the long term. I know all of us want that. And, you know, yeah. sometimes it's just, and sometimes maybe you, you might be close to where you want to be, but you just need some tweaks and refinements and, Totally. Sarit, you know, Sarit can be there to help, uh, help all of you, uh, uh, listening, uh, with that as well. So send me over all of your links, uh, ebook, any content, um, and then, and then I'll send you the, uh, this, I want to aim to post our interview for next Friday. I got one I'm posting later today and then, yeah, I'll send you the, uh, the raw video and then all the clips. So it's been an yeah. absolute pleasure having you on and, uh, yeah, I would love to, uh, have you on again. Yeah. Would love to do that too. Yeah. And then which uh, platforms are you most active on if our listeners want to reach out to you, engage with you? Yeah. So we are, you can find us on all social media platforms at Erin and Sarit. And most active on is Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you can just find us at Erin and Sarit. And we, we do a live show two times per week. And then we're on Instagram, like, you know, small, short, short form content every day. However, if you want to like geek out on what we teach, then you can also hop into our YouTube 
uh, YouTube is my favorite because I love to do things like this. And uh, we're, we're also on podcast as well. Right on. Awesome. Yeah. I'll have to check you out on YouTube because that's like my sole platform now just because I yeah. like the YouTube shorts. They, they didn't have YouTube shorts before when I started YouTube because I was doing long form and I'm like, man, this is a game changer. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, you take care street. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll chat soon and I'll send you over the, uh, the, yeah, the clips and then the, uh, the full interview. Cool. Thanks for having awesome. me. Adam. Yeah. Thanks it's for an absolute pleasure. Me. Yeah. You have a great rest of your day. You too. Take care. Bye then. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Mindset. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Your support helps us bring you more inspiring content and expert insights. Join our community on social media at mind.sep on Instagram, at mind-sep on YouTube, and visit our website, Alexander Muir, that's Amazon Mike, UIR.com forward slash blog for more exclusive resources and updates. Until next time, keep optimizing your mind and body and see you in the next episode.